court in its March 17th, 2020 uh, uh, judgment held that the Architects Act 1972 does not prohibit individuals not registered under the Act to undertake practice of architecture and other cognate activities. This has been met with uproar and confusion within the architectural fraternity. The overwhelming turnout to this live session is indeed a sign of a concerned fraternity. There are many questions being raised by many students and architects alike, unsure of what it means to our futures, individual and collective. We've received a huge number of questions and the names of all those who had posted their questions was on our backdrop visible prior to the session and will be put up on our website too. A big thank you for all of, to all of you. Today, we are fortunate to have architect Habib Khan, president of the Council of Architecture, help us understand the implications of this ruling and the road ahead for us. Architect Habib Khan graduated from BNIT Nagpur in 1987 and went on to pursue his master's from the University of Illinois Urbana Champaign. An award-winning designer, consultant, public speaker and teacher, and now the chairman of the council, president of the Council of Architecture India, he has donned many hats. It's our pleasure to have him on board today. I thank architect Srinivas Murthy, a friend and a contemporary from School of Planning and Architecture days uh, when we were in college, for agreeing to join and uh, uh, handle the questions in this session. Srinivas is the founder and principal at his award-winning practice, SMG Design Incorporated. He is the founding president of ADF, which is Architecture and Design Foundation India, which is an organization dedicated to spread awareness about values of good design and architecture. He's been at the forefront of enhancing public dialogue about architecture and design, thus aptly suited to moderate this discussion. Welcome on board SMG and over to you now to take to shoot your questions at uh, architect Habib Khan. Uh, thank you, Gita. I think it's indeed a wonderful, um, you know, event that you have organized. Um, I think by the sheer number of responses, I think that we have got, it shows that, that how much architects are actually worried. And I can, I'm very happy to also note that there are equal number of students who have raised a lot of concerns. So obviously, you know, there is an issue at hand we have and your young architects, going to be young architects are really worried. So I think it's a wonderful platform to address some of those concerns. And also, I think uh, it is equally important to use this occasion uh, to reach out to CO. And in that sense, I'm very thankful to Habib to having agreed to come on board and address the fraternity. So uh, welcome, uh, Habib, uh, to this uh, platform and uh, looking forward to uh, uh, interacting with you uh, on this occasion. Uh, let me also uh, start with um, a little bit of background, how we are planning to structure this whole uh, talk. Uh, since uh, the whole um, uh, event was curated uh, around this whole judgment of by the Supreme Court. So I think... Shrini, Shrini we've lost your volume, your audio. You've muted yourself. Just unmute yourself, please. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, so as I was saying that we would start this session uh, with the Supreme Court judgment because that has caused uh, this whole anxiety amongst all of us and this event was curated around that. And then we will go on to discuss uh, the act, uh, what are the proposed amendments and uh, how we are looking at it, what architects of this country think about and how do we, how we should go about it. And then there are a lot of questions which are also related to education. Uh, of course, many of them have kind of linked it with the uh, Supreme Court judgment. So I'm sure we will be able to address Hello. issues related Hello. to education. And uh, uh, I think I would request all our audience uh, Hello. for some time to unmute uh, mute themselves so that you will be able to hear me clearly. Yeah. Uh, wait a minute, let me just mute all and give everyone the permission to unmute and then you could set it from right? the right. Thank you, Sonam. Uh, so as I was saying that we would also have received some very interesting questions which are very generic in nature but with deals with architecture, practice, 
including quality of architecture that we are producing in this country. So probably if time permits, we will take those set of questions at the last. Uh, so with this, I would begin and I think I will now address all my questions to architect Habib Khan. Uh, morning, uh, Habib, uh, can you hear me? Good morning, good morning. Yeah, yes, good. I can. Good morning, everyone. Uh, that's nice. Good to see you face to face. This is the first time I'm seeing you after you have become <laughs> the president. So how are you feeling? How right, is it right. to be the president of the Council of Architecture? I guess the the heat the heat is catching up. Yo, I know. Well. I, I was just saying, what a time to become a president <laughs> of the council when you have so many challenges that have come up. At, it looks like that the whole world was waiting for you. You know, they're basically uh, trying to test your <laughs> skills. Now as a, um, that's uh, so that's what the challenge share, is all about, right? Yes. Um, and I'm, I'm sure we are very happy that you are at the helm and hope that, that your, uh, you know, presidentship does something remarkable for the country and for the whole architects fraternity. And we all are looking up to you. Uh, I know it's quite a challenging uh, task um, i mean especially when this whole sc the supreme court's ruling has come then you have this whole corona going on slowdown of economy and suddenly there is lots of you know losses of jobs for architects and young architects seems to be really worried so i can see you know um, i'm sure you're feeling very challenged yes yes absolutely challenged and then the and the, and the challenges keep increasing by the day Ah, okay, so what keeps you Sorry. up in the night? <laughs> Pardon? I said, what keeps you up in the night? <laughs> is the reaction of our friend. Oh, Not is the that Supreme Court judgment. <laughs> okay, that's so. I hope that uh, today, with you reaching out to the whole fraternity, um, I'm sure we will be able to address some of their concerns. Um, so just to begin with, I wanted to give an overall perspective to the whole fraternity here about you yeah, and yes. your role in the council. So how long have you been in the council? Or this is, is my fourth year. Term? No, this Sorry? is my second term. I've been there for about four years now. Okay. Yeah. So you have known council how it functions and I'm sure as a practicing architect, you also have the distinguished of being yeah. a director of a school of architecture. So I'm sure you're quite aware. So in your opinion, um, right. what was that you used to have an opinion about council before and after you've been in it? Has anything changed? A lot of things have changed. Actually. We're trying to reach out to people and uh, we're trying to you know, be more inclusive and more transparent, more honest, more committed to a our cause, our profession, to our academics, and to, and slowly, I think all of you have noticed the change. I guess the kind of vibes and the messages that I keep receiving and the uh, approach that we are having, and uh, I am sure in times to come, you guys will see the difference more evident. Oh, okay. So that's nice to hear. I think uh, so. So what I, at least I could tell you from my side that I can see that there's more outreach happening. Um, so I wish right. uh, council continues to do that and reaches out to more and more uh, members of the fraternity uh, in the coming time. So let's start that's what with I'm this. Saying, you know, yeah, I'm, that's what I'm saying. I mean, council is all yours. Council belongs to everyone else. It's yours. I mean. Just take it as it's yours. And participate, contribute, be involved and together we can bring about a change that's what i keep saying okay that's that's nice way to begin so uh, so let me ask you a different question uh, have you been a cricket fan uh, what did you say Shani? have you been a the cricket voice? fan i uh, kind of yeah okay I no because i thought it. that i thought we had got some something, you know <laughs> Uh, because I thought that we have got some hundreds of questions and between the Ethos SH team and myself, we have shortlisted about, you know, 100 questions for you. 
so we are going to you know keep trying all kinds of balls at you and we want to see how you defend yourself so that's why i thought i'll ask you this question so tell me what I'm is sure, this I'm whole sure, thing i'm sure we'll defend it very well uh, oh yeah okay so let's see how it goes uh, so let me start with this big question so what is this whole supreme court judgment all about see i have i have given a clarification in the in the note that we had put out called the president's message after the supreme court judgment and it is very clear and very elaborately written uh, so basically this was a elahabad high court case which came up to the supreme court regarding the promotion of a particular architect who was not you know if you it is not going into the details of what the case was but the supreme court decided to also include role of an architect and the service of an architect in the in, and uh, i'm sure most of you would have read the judgment or are aware of the judgment the contents of the judgment and uh, uh, supreme court has obviously stated the obvious which is there in the act there were there were few high courts also given the same same judgment but now the supreme court has also interpreted what is written in the act so nothing new has happened nothing uh, the sky hasn't fallen on your heads nothing to so, worry about we have been so, in this situation in 1972 so can we briefly say that this judgment is uh, basically arising out of an employee of a government organization who was not promoted and he was questioning the act uh, because he was not called right. an architect is that how it was we started with that yeah okay but it's interesting that how supreme court has gone yeah uh, it's very interesting to see that how supreme court has gone ahead and actually elaborated beyond just that particular question which was addressed to it so i think that is uh, uh, the whole issue here is that many people have raised this concern that was it all a sudden development or has it been growing for some time no it's been there for a long long time i mean there are four high court judgments earlier in probably 20 25 years this issue has been going on and see the role of the court what is the role of a court court only interpret what is written in the law right so it is there in our act if you read various sections if you have read the act in if you read various sections you will understand that the practice is not protected only the title is protected now there has been lot of debate on it there has been lot of discussions in various courts fraternity of architects and so many other and what why is this not protected and what is the entitlement of a title right but court has interpreted what is written in the act so i i want to say one thing you know so, always i mean i've been answering people that in 1972 when the act was made the situation was same there were you know handful of architects you know 40 50 100 architects at that time and uh, uh, maybe eight or 10 architectural schools but in these 50 years 60 years since 1972 our profession has grown to more than a lack of architects now registered architects more than a lack registered architects we have more than so many schools and and the profession has grown you know leaps and bounds the infrastructure industry has grown the construction industry has grown and you know everywhere development is happening society more importantly society is now more aware of what an architect is and what an architect does which is a very positive sign which was not there in 1972 in fact when we started practice in 1989 or 90 uh, people didn't know what an architect you know does or what an interior yeah, designer does yeah, i can understand what you're saying i mean that so, is how so i mean the the, the awareness has grown okay sorry to uh, i think you we lost you there but i would just say that yes it's it's a fact that we have grown and there is lot more awareness about architecture uh, compared to what it was 30 40 50 years ago uh, but having said that that awareness uh, should also apply to let's say non architects including some of the judges of the supreme court so uh, there is a very interesting question to ask here is that why would court go beyond uh, 
just let us say issuing a ruling on the question that was raised rather than saying that making a kind of a headline statement saying that everybody can practice now architecture so uh, was it not that we could not defend no, we ourselves have, we, well yeah, we have made... no no we have defended very well in the court if you if you see the proceedings and if you hear the proceedings they have defended pretty well pretty well pretty strongly but the thing is ki see if, if if your act if your law does not say the supreme court or any other court will not go a step out or step ahead go and define what is not written there it's going to only define what is written there but we have done very well in the court that's not a problem this was obvious i mean it was writing on the wall that it will, it will say ki your services are not protected because and and if you see the judgment i'll just share very shortly if you want i can share it on the screen for everyone to see if you read the judgment and if you see certain lines which are very pertinent supreme court has also wondered you know and exclaimed he has to is surprising as to why the services are not protected in the act correct i think that's the interesting part of the judgment i think somebody has asked that isn't there anything positive uh, coming out of this judgment for us so uh, i would give you everything that opportunity is positive. to this is the uh, most positive that. thing that has happened yeah. i will i will i will share this screen very shortly now after a while what i am trying to tell you is a very let's take it very positively instead of taking it negatively that it is you know very bad for the profession as the general perception is all about let's take it very positively let us move towards uh, towards amending the act which is very pertinent now at the moment where you need to define architectural services where you need to be very precise of what an architectural service is all about and who can practice architecture this linking has to happen in the amendment and supreme court judgment i am sure will propel us faster and the government also and the legislative also to you know amend the act as fast as possible because so the very the, the the sole content the sole intent of the act whole intent of the act is defeated by this you know by this provision of not uh, protecting architectural services so who whom does it protect i mean i understand that it has raised lot of questions about practice of architecture but obviously the stated objective of this case was to See, give first of all let us understand thing this is the ha uh the stated objective of this case was to give relief to the gentleman who had actually first filed the case but beyond that do you see any kind of a, a larger group which is behind it or are they likely to benefit whom does it protect in that sense see there a couple of things in this uh first is let us understand one thing that the architects act is not made for us it is made for the common people like every act of the government is that's number 1 and because it is an architects act we architects feel it is for us right so basically if you see the supreme court judgment is written very clearly whom does it protect it protects the common man from architect from you know misuse of architectural services and thing like that i'll i'll, I'll show you that on the screen so the idea is ki it is protecting the common man right number 1 number 2 whom does it benefit basically it benefits architectural fraternity at large because not only it will it will uh, propel the government and the legislature to amend the act faster but it will also pave a way it has created such a huge awareness in the society of what architecture is and what architecture so if you look at if you look at it positively where have you seen in the in the headlines on the newspapers or in various social media people talking of architecture and architecture take it positively that way okay so uh, that's uh, good to hear from you uh, so uh, what my next question would be that um, how are the government organizations are going to react to this because we know that we have been having issues with many government organizations across the country which float you know expression of interest and bid uh, interest and all that where they say you know till now at least they have been mentioning a word called architect or firms of architects are invited to you know uh, send in their eois which uh, in some ways safeguarded our interest but now do you see that they are now going to do away with this and say that uh, let's say to for the benefit of this discussion can they use this word called building design professionals are invited to express send in their eois they can what you yes they can if they would want to they can they did also earlier but most of the government organizations the pwd the cpwd the ngcc the red cross there so many other organizations which are large employers of architectural services understand 
and the society in general also these days understand the importance of an architect and the and the technical and the creative prowess of an architect and the expertise that goes into an architectural service with the background of five years of learning people understand society has also started learning these have learned the services of architect is mandatory and necessary so i am i am sure about it it's not going to happen uh, so soon and maybe uh, one off case here and there is a different issue but in general this is not going to happen because you know you understand when you are large scale projects you you need an architect's expertise to design that project which is very complex any other person other than an architect be it an engineer or a non trained uh, person cannot do this job that everyone knows most of us know and we won't let that uh, you know happen and we won't uh, reach that stage we'll be amending the act before that so that's wonderful to uh, try to amend the act particular before. point because yeah because somebody has actually raised this question that you know this whole uh, issue is not so much to do with the big established and well to do architects because it's actually going to affect the small time and you know medium level operators because that's where the real competition from the other uh, side of the table people who are on the other side are giving them tough time uh, so uh, i think there in fact the question has been raised that how council can do something to protect the interest of such people who are in tier 2 cities even in tier 1 cities but with a medium or a you know low scale operations or offices uh, that i would definitely like to you to say something about it you want to say it right now or we actually had put it in a different section but you can go ahead and answer because that's where the we, it. We, will, we will answer there in that section yeah okay so then you know the question See, i mean, comes I mean let us understand one thing ha huh? yeah please go ahead uh, let, let us understand one thing that majority of our practice happens in tier 2 and 3 cities maybe not uh, volume wise but but number wise and uh, these people the people in uh, architects in tier 2 3 4 cities are the one who are affected by you know uh, not necessarily the supreme court judgment but because of the lack of awareness in the society and gradually it is percolating down uh, i mean uh, if you see the 80s or if you see the early 90s these are metro sectors and tier 2 cities people didn't know what an architectural service was all about but now it has gradually percolated down to tier 2 and 3 cities and it will go down uh, further but which is very, very one very important point which i would like to make here is that we as a fraternity of architects need to uh, get out of our cocoons and reach out to people reach out to society reach out to the common man what have we as a fraternity done for the upliftment of the poor what have we done what have we contributed to the rural empowerment what have we done for you know so many uh, a section of a society in our country which is bereft of architectural services people who cannot afford architectural services what kind of social contribution we have done if we start doing that if we start cooperating with the government and the other policies that we have if we work for this section of the society you know without any prob probal gains but as a as a csr activity the awareness of architects in the society in the bureaucracy in the government will increase and that will benefit us indirectly in the long run so this is a very important point which all of us need to understand Uh, but i i would definitely like to uh, take this on to you next because there is a question related to this as well exactly. that you know we yeah. are anyway right now a very low paying profession uh, not you know many architects are finding it difficult and then you are talking about doing going beyond just the practice so we will come back to that but then you know the question also arises is that with this judgment uh, ultimately what is council what is its role is it only to get a title of an architect and now that the um, the court says that you don't need to have the title of an architect to design a building so i don't even need to register um, how do you react to such observations i mean i <laughs> i don't know I mean, if you want to surrender your registration you're welcome to do it and i've been i've been asking people to do that since since i became the president when this question has come up but not a single architect has come and surrendered the registration because you understand the value of a registered architect and once you surrender you surrender you know and then you can't uh, become an architect after the act is amended and you reap the benefits of whatever you know additional benefits of being a registered architect yeah i'm sure i mean this question has come up because people are really now very agitated concerned you know and they are really no worried. this question has come up really i i fundamentally i i fundamentally disagree here because this question has come up for one reason 
that we as fraternity of architects are not united. We are a handful of number one lakh in a country, you know, when, when more than a lakh engineers graduate every year. And we are minority and we don't stay united. We want to pull our pants down in public and wash our linen, you know, in public. And we want, uh, uh, we want, you know, uh, we talk idealistically and we don't uh, uh, stay united. And if you think this is a time of crisis, I don't think, but if people think it's a time of crisis, it is more pertinent that we all stay united. And we all work towards strengthening our profession rather than, you know, this talk of surrendering your registration certificate should not arise at all because you should understand the value of being a registered architect and you should, feel pride, you should take pride in doing that, you know. Let us stay united. If, if you think this is a time of crisis, let us stay united. And, you know, I, I agree with you. In Hindi, we say that Kulari Mari. This is not that. This is Kulari Paja Ke Amne Pair Mara. Hai. <laughs> no, I Even think... if there was a Supreme Court judgment, we should have bloody kept quiet and not publicized it. Yeah? I mean, come on. There were so many High Court judgments before that we never published it. We are going to take the Supreme Court and we are going to take the Supreme Court. We are going to take the Supreme Court. Okay, so you have... Sorry, but I mean, this is not the reality. Point. But the appeal is to stay united. Right. So I agree with you and I take a clue from your word. Appeal is, is that ki, are we planning to appeal to the Supreme Court? who has shared screen can the gentleman put it off i cannot hear what you're saying i cannot you know hear see you clearly uh, shrini someone called mr ramis yes we're trying to switch anyway. it off from our end as well okay. but i think their internet is okay yeah. that's okay okay so uh, yes, shrini, can you hear me now yeah. uh, i can okay. hear you yeah Oh, that's nice. You know, I was wondering whether I should call you Habib or Mr. Habib now that you have said it, Shini. So I'll just continue with... Uh, the, so no, I, I agree no, with you. Your whole... it's, not, it's not the days of Mr. Shini. It's the days of G. So Habib G is a better option. But okay. we know before the days of the presidency. So I think Habib is good enough. Oh, that's thanks. Thank you so much. So, okay, coming back to this whole question, what I was saying that... I mean, you said we should, uh, you are appealing to all the architects. I'm asking you, are you appealing to the Supreme Court? Are you doing something about this? Yes, judgment? we are. Is of course, there... we are. See, the, we feel, we feel, we yes, we feel, see, there are some, some very pertinent issues which have been overlooked by the Supreme Court. And uh, uh, some issues, some judgments, earlier judgments have been interpreted in a way which it was not meant to be. With all due respect to the uh, Supreme Court and without, you know, uh, getting into being a contempt of, of the court. So we are going to appeal to the Supreme Court. We are working on it. Senior lawyers uh, are working on it. And we're taking their advice. And as soon as this lockdown is lifted up, then the court opens, we will file our appeal. Okay. So what happens? Let's say we are able to um, go and appeal to Supreme Court and they listen to us out. And as, let's say, luck is in our favor and we have some kind of a, you know, a relief coming from them. Would the situation be same as it was earlier before the judgment or things are going to improve or would they change? Yes. No, I mean, if, if it, uh, Supreme Court cannot, you know, tell that architectural services has to be include, included. Supreme Court can request or direct the government to, to have the act amended. So un until the act is amended, situation will remain same. After the amendment of the act, we will be empowered to you know execute and implement the amendments that's the only thing at the moment if you see uh, architectural services are defined so no government department what your concern was a little while ago can hire anyone else other than an architect for any project right, right. if the act is amended so you are bound by law so we'll be able to implement it more effectively at the moment we have written to so many earlier also i mean before I was a president, we've been writing to so many departments and departments have been agreeing to do it. Even now we're writing to the secretaries, chief secretaries, and the, most of them are agreeing to do it. There were issue of multiple registrations, issue of non-architects, you know, being invited to bid and all that. I mean, all the departments are listening to it. And, and the situation is not as bad as we think it is. It, it's pretty rosy. It has been clubbed with the, with the slowdown in the economy so that people overall in the country, not only in the country, in the entire world have fewer jobs. So the issue seems to be more compounded and complicated. 
obviously that's how it is right now and i i'm sure that's what i meant in the my opening remarks that you are also the president in very difficult times so definitely it is going to be quite challenging but coming back to this whole supreme court uh, ruling again you said that you are hoping that in the appeal supreme court might give a direction to the government so could we not have argued on this line in in the present case itself where the court along with we this, did i'll i'll share this thing just won't. just give me i'll i'll share six slides and i will okay. tell you what the supreme court has said actually right so meanwhile Only i will most can share in this meeting i cannot share uh i've changed the setting now now you can yeah just now so anyway while you are sharing that screen i would yeah. uh, continue yeah. to uh, throw some thoughts and questions to you that uh, so there there is this is on the screen let's finish this See, say Section 37 was enacted to protect citizens from being misled by the untrained person and mistakenly entrusting them with the task of construction. Even though the single judge undoubtedly recognized the need for trained and qualified architects, Section 37 was interpreted as it is written actually. Then you go to the next one, which says when examined in juxtaposition to these two statutes, which are the Indian Medical Council and the Law Advocates Act. the choice of this legislature to restrict the title and style of architect in section 37 of the architects act as opposed to the very practice of the profession is significant now understand every word that the supreme court is saying is very significant you know we need to use this we are going to use this in the appeal as well as for the amendment of the act then if you see now this is also very very significant which probably all of us have overlooked it to answer the question whether reading section 37 as a prohibition merely on the use of the title and style of architect by unregistered individuals would in truth defeat the object and purpose of the architects act you get the point but it it goes ahead and says ki uh, we have to interpret what is written in the act in spite of they saying this now let's see this however where a plain reading of the text of the statute leads to an absurd or unreasonable meaning the text of the statute must be construed in the light of the object and purpose with which the legislation enacted the act where it is contended that a particular interpretation would lead to defeat defeating the very object of legislation such an interpretive outcome would clearly be absurd or unreasonable the court is saying the supreme court is very clearly saying that this decision that we are going to give is a very absurd and it defeats the purpose of the legislation right so would be very absurd and reasonable so this is all we have to understand it's it's a very good judgment very thoroughly written and then it has it has also interpreted the statement of objects and reasons given by the legislation in passing of the act when the act was passed it says with this increase in the building activity in 1972 we are talking of with this increase in the building activity many unqualified persons calling themselves architects are undertaking the construction of buildings which are uneconomical and quite frequently are unsafe thus bringing into disrepute the profession of architects right so this is the passing of this legislation it will be unlawful for any person to designate himself as architect unless he has the requisite qualification and experience and is registered under the act this is what the court says in interpreting the condition now you see the point number 32 which says architecture undoubtedly constitutes a highly specialized profession requiring the possession of minimum educational qualification in other words architects provide a set of specialized services towards the larger goal of construction anybody engaging the services of an individual calling themselves as architect is assured that such an individual possesses statutory recognized educational qualification and is competent to complete the task at hand it is in this manner that the legislature protects the common person from untrained individuals this is this is what the supreme court has said it's, it's a very uh, it's, it's to me is a very informed judgment which goes in our favor where we say that uh, you know we use this judgment and convince the, the legislator legislator to amend the act prashini can you hear me we can hear you i think there's a problem with his internet
Shini, are you there? Well, well, until he joins, uh, I've been reading in the chat a lot of questions which people are asking. Uh, we will try to answer them as much as we can. Most of the questions and the contents are covered in the questions which Shini already has with him, I think. And uh, that's what you were saying in the beginning of the, the uh, session, that most of the topics have been uh, uh, covered. But uh, some of the questions are uh, out of ignorance of uh, law and ignorance of the act which I think this forum cannot answer, which that will take a long, long time to answer. So I'll, I'll pass those questions. And uh, let's uh, I wait to for Shini to come in. Meanwhile, anyone of... Yeah, can I, can I yeah. ask one of the questions that has repeatedly come in? Yeah. Uh, what are the yeah. steps the council is taking towards the amendment of the act? If you can just uh, spend some time uh, uh, telling us what... What, is the, what are the steps the council is looking at towards the amendment of the act? How, how soon can we see the act actually seeing the amendment? See, I'll, I'll tell you the, I'll, I'll tell you the, huh, I will tell you the process of the amendment. Uh, council has been working on it since a long, long time. The uh, last uh, stage that uh, we are in at the moment is uh, uh, in 2015, 16, there was a committee which was formulated, a lot of uh, public involvement happened and suggestions were invited and a comprehensive document was made which was submitted to the ministry for amendments. The ministry appointed a Bhalla committee, uh, which I think everyone knows, uh, Mr. Bhalla headed that committee. They came up with some suggestions, some corrections and they submitted to the council for uh, uh, to be put up to the ministry again. After that, there were some, uh, some more uh, corrections, some more additions, alterations which were done. And uh, now there were about two committees within the council which sat on it and discussed. The last uh, committee has come up with their recommendations and a lot of work has happened on it. Uh, we are now looking at it afresh and we will once again for a very short period of time uh, uh, await a few more suggestions uh, which will I am sure come in now with the awareness that has happened with this judgment. And then we will submit it to the ministry. The ministry after going through it, reviewing through it, will submit it to the parliament for amendments. That's the process that happens. And we, I think, should be able to do this after the lockdown is lifted. We'll take about a month. So uh, let's say uh, end of May, we should be able to submit it to the ministry, the consolidated amendments that we would want. What I want from all of, all of you who are there, who are the audience today, and the fraternity, we'll reach out to the fraternity individually and independently as well. The most critical point and the most critical issue in the entire gamut of things that is happening at the moment and the scenario is to amend the definition or to include the definition of the architectural service. What is an architectural service or what constitutes to be an architectural service? I would request that all of you please think over it and tell us what you think should be an architectural service, which we will, after obvious uh, our discussions on it and brainstorming on it and taking legal advice we will incorporate into the suggestions that we'll give to the Ministry for Amendment of the Act. Great. So uh, I think Shrini is having uh, problems with his uh, internet. I'll continue until then. So that kind of uh, gives an idea. I mean the right. question that were asked was about right. the time frame. Uh, so you addressed that and also there was a question on what do you expect as is the fraternity of architects to help the council with uh, uh, to arrive at this, these uh, amendments. Also, there was one uh, uh, comment here which said, uh, can IIA at different levels maybe uh, represent to the government? Is that something that I you have a very, uh, this, this Gita, I'll tell you, is a very, very important and a very valid pertinent point that we all need to understand. I would suggest we have to, first of all, let me answer the time frame. The time frame is, not determinable now because the ministry takes its own time ministry will review the entire thing and will be tabled by a particular minister or a mp in the parliament and parliament will sit session to session so the act is also taken session to session you know uh, the, the issues are taken session to session and the act amendment will happen in a parliament session so we cannot uh, determine now how much time it will take from our end, we'll try to expedite it as much as possible. And from other ends also, we'll see to it that the parliament takes it up 
as soon as possible and amend the act. That's the time frame that I'm talking about. Now, one very important thing is, now very important thing that is. What, what is good about this time frame is that I think the current government and your tenure is kind of synchronous. It started around the same time. So hopefully by the and time, we, uh, yeah. And we hope to work in sync with the government to have this done as soon as possible. So let's hope so, and keep but up very with I'm, your tenure. Yeah. No, but I'm, I'm ensuring that we are working to on it and absolutely uh, on it, absolutely committed in doing it. And we will take it and hopefully we will be able to, inshallah, do it before the tenure ends. I mean, tenure ending is about, you know, still two and a half years away, but we, we are still saying the government tenure is also ending in three years. So we will ensure that let's, I am myself giving a time of a year, not more than that. But let's hope we'll be able to achieve. But I have a very important appeal to make to everyone who is here uh, watching and my countrymen and the fraternity of architects. Uh, we will share with you all a document of amendment. Right? Uh, I want each one of you approach your MPs, elected members of parliament. Make them aware from your constituency. Make them aware of the Architects Act. Make them aware of what amendments we want and why we want those amendments. Make them aware of the Supreme Court judgment. Make them aware of why is the need to amend this act. Every MP from every area, there are about you know, 550, 60 MPs, MP, each one of you approach your MPs, respective MPs, either in groups or individuals. Because it's very important that the member of parliament are aware of this act and its amendment. They should not be taken by surprise when it is in the Built want to build a platform where when the act is stable in the parliament, everyone knows what it is all about and why is it needed. And one more thing, when you do this, also ask them to write to the HRD ministry, Mr. Mr. Pokrialji, or whoever would the minister be, Ministry of Human Resource, to consider amending this act as soon as possible. So the MPs should write to the minister. The MLAs should write to the minister. We want to develop a pressure, a public pressure, apart from creating awareness on the concerned people who are actually going to table this. Unless we build this consensus, uh, things will take a little more time if we are able to build this consensus and build this pressure uh, through the MPs on the ministry and the parliament I am sure we'll be able to achieve it in half the time. Okay. So thanks for that uh, uh, indication that the time frame may be one year. So maybe a year down the line, we'll have another session discussing <laughs> post. <laughs> no, uh, but I want to promise from I want to promise from each and every one, at least who's attending session, that they will do this. Yes, for sure. Yes, yes. We're also going to have their email IDs and things which we could share and maybe uh, pursue the same with. With that. I think Srini is back here. Are you here, Srini? Can you, would you yes, like to? Yes, I'm back. Uh, my apologies. Um, you know, I just simply tripped over the land connection, so it went off. But I, I heard, I was hearing you all what you were saying on the, my phone, so it was good that I could make out what uh, Habib was trying to say. Uh, so, coming back to some critical, now that you have addressed many issues which are also going to be asked in the other sections of act amendment and education uh, but i'll quickly uh, conclude this particular segment on the supreme court judgment with uh, two more questions uh, one is that you know uh, with this judgment definitely the question has arisen this is uh, been till now at least architects were supposed to be responsible for the design the signatures that they were doing on the uh, papers and drawings. So where does the bug stop now? Uh, as you have now given an indication of an, about an year's time where hopefully things would be normal. Uh, I'm hoping that if we go to Supreme Court for an appeal and kind of get the judgment not reversed or at least some kind of a favorable uh, ruling in our architect's favor. Uh, so no, no, let's be back. But then the question is then what happens in, in this interim period? It is very, it is, it is, see, let us not expect, let us not have false uh, assurances. Supreme Court uh, verdict is a final verdict, is the final word of law, you know, uh, and there's no other higher court than that. We can only appeal and we can only request the judiciary to look at it again because these points were omitted. 
so i mean you know let us not have false assurances that a new ruling will come in if the supreme court agrees for a review and having another bench it will be the biggest thing that will have ever happen in the annals of supreme court the way it was a two judge bench it was not a single judge bench no i agree but I, the question here was not so much about how soon or when or what kind of a relief we will get the question is what happens to us architects who are now taking up uh, assignments signing on the documents signing on the drawings and now that the ruling says that architects don't need to do that if anybody can do it so where would the buck stop of responsibility in the project so what happens in this interim period is the question nothing as things are they will continue i'm sure about it like i'm saying space sky is not going to fall over heads so, nothing is going to change our profession in spite of this drawback in the act so called drawback in the act has been thriving and being successful and it will continue the way it is okay so now two last questions uh, one is that is this uh, only unique to india or does that similar thing happen abroad no no it's a or different any other country uh, that council would have studied yeah we have, we have been studying lot of uh, regulatory boards uh, of other countries and we studied the acts of the other countries as well the only thing is the definition of the architectural services some canadian board australian board the uk board the us board everywhere it, the services have been defined very clearly it is only in our act where this is is not defined so that you propose to do now in the amendment part of the act right yeah yeah and yeah, the last question yeah. in this section is this is a question from majority of the teaching faculty that how do they explain this whole uh, event or incident you may want to call it to the students who seem to be worried so how do they explain this to them i think it will be nice if it comes straight from you to them i whatever i have said show this recording to them <laughs> but same the only thing is let us let us understand one thing very clearly that the future of our profession is not as bleak as you think it is and it has nothing to do with the ruling of the supreme court or the or the interpretation of the act it has it is what it was earlier and it will be what it is now so it's not going to change at all there's no worry for the profession there's no worry for the future of the uh, younger architects coming into uh, into the practice or uh, students joining architecture there's nothing to worry about it and let us not make it into a a, a goliath kind of thing you know where you know the kya bolte hain usko hindi mein why is there some i i tel ka taad banana tang ha something like taad banana okay tel ka taad banana or something don't make it like that we are making it you know i am i am appealing to everyone very open heartedly and very openly and and saying that it is your council let us strengthen it i mean i'm seeing a lot of negative comments in the chat which which makes me say this but nothing has happened to the uh, uh, to the profession nothing is going to happen to the profession be rest assured about it yeah. but our profession know, is a very yeah, i wouldn't say a, a noble but it will it will keep growing the way it is i think it will grow further you know the only problem that is happening is because of the slowing down of the economy which is making people hyperventilate uh, on this issue of the profession being bleak i mean look at the other professions they are also in the same boat as we because of the economic economic slow down that is happening in our country and in the world no definitely i am sure you know the way you have answered it and also there are other examples which have happened in the recent past in the country uh, look at the act you know 2016 rera act which has given a quite a responsible position to an architect in the project but i'm sure there are many other things that would happen and the way you have answered you know that makes uh, the next question uh, it's a pretty difficult one um, tough one uh, somebody wants I to really... I, yeah, that that part is over i thought the difficult part is over no we are not going no? to leave you we are not going to leave you so soon <laughs> okay so i am going to continue to uh, you know put some tough questions to you and uh, uh, you are with us for the next uh, hour and a half and we are not going to let you go so uh, the question <laughs> here is that has coa failed the fraternity i mean no no matter uh, how however much you argue in favor that yes we are going to do things good and things will change but as of now has coa failed the fraternity 
See, this is a difficult is question to answer. answer. I know the answer, but it's very difficult to answer. Because whatever I say would cast an end on the earlier terms. And yes. I feel the chair is a perpetual chair. So whatever has happened earlier mm-hmm. by earlier presidents and by executive committee or the council members, I am also responsible for that because now I am occupying that chair. So answering anything yeah. adverse uh, would be, you know, casting a version on. I would prefer not to answer this. I can only look ahead and say what is what we are going to do and how it will be. And you guys will see the difference. We are, we, if, you, if you give me time at the end, we will tell you what we are all are doing. And that will probably solve a lot of anxieties and questions that people are asking. But in the end, I can, I can very briefly tell you in five minutes what we intend to do. Yeah. Okay. I think that's, that's a good way to put uh, across your point. And I think also we need to understand that council is not uh, something separate from all of us. <clears throat> As you had started in the beginning saying that council is us. So that's how we need to look at it. Uh, another important point, which I definitely I would like to share with the rest of the fraternity of the country is that council is not something which, you know, a couple of them sitting in Delhi. Actually, all the council members are spread all across the country. We have about 52 of them, 53 of them. And I was just looking at the distribution. They are almost from every state, every state capital as well. And I think as architects also, we could reach out to them and probably look at them as uh, problem solving issues locally and then it can be escalated all the way up to the national capital but yes uh, i agree with your point of view it is it was not aimed at trying to uh, you know pinpoint one particular person or president but as a whole yes fraternity definitely has to as a whole yes i will tell you as a, as a whole I, I will tell you i'll tell you what is happening to me uh, as a, as a, if you see it as a in a larger perspective uh, Fortunately or unfortunately, the council was concentrating on the education and the academic part of it. The profession part was neglected for a long, long time. Uh, probably because uh, uh, the issues were not as many as they are, as complex as they are now or they are today. Uh, but we have said we will concentrate on equally on both the issues and we will look forward to addressing all concerns. And uh, and there is definitely a, a, a image beating which the council has taken. And it arises not only because of the inactivity or inaction at the council level, uh, but also uh, at our fraternity who thinks that CEO deliver God, who is going to deliver uh, is, is that that the issues arise of arise out of. And the thing that you have just said uh, uh, about the representatives in the council, every state is represented by a council. So you know, it's it's like a it's like a system of parliament where every MP represents a constituency, and then you know you go to the parliament to take your issue. So what I request everyone, whether in whichever state they are, whichever city they are, they should approach their local representative who is representing their state with the council and apprise them of their issues, and you know, uh, and you and 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 come to us so that we have a more consolidated, inclusive kind of uh, uh, solution finding. And we are able to address the issue more, more clearly. Now you expect that in you know, some remote part in the country, in South India or Far East, there is some problem of registration. I mean, it's just like, you know, uh, you want a birth certificate for your child and you're asking the prime minister to give that birth certificate. So the system has to be democratically, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a parallel system, it has to work, which will be more effective way of working. Uh, that's a good point you make. Uh, so I think here is the question now, uh, which many people have asked that who is actually a representative body of the architects? Is it COA and is it IIA? I know it's a very difficult question, uh, but I, I would assume that both are in two different ways. Uh, so the question here is that, you know, when you talked about uh, this whole question of representation, having issues, uh, you mentioned that you know it's like asking for that birth certificate but then the question is also asked here is that if somebody is violating let's say in a municipal corporation or a municipality somebody has signed uh, either a forged a coa certificate or somebody has done something how does coa come to know of it and what how does it take certain action against such people what is the mechanism you have there's a, there's a very distinct mechanism you need to complain to the council there's a format of the council, you complain to the council and then council 
uh, works on it, investigates so it, moves in the um, and then uh, if there is a prima facie case. Uh, sorry to button there. I thought that you were saying that ki somebody from the fraternity has to complain. Uh, otherwise, there is no other way to find out. Yes, of course. Somebody had, okay. There are other other indirect means of finding out in the in the advertisements, in papers, newspapers, in the media, or if it is brought to the notice of the council. Now nowadays, what people are doing is you know you WhatsApp or you put it on social media and you think responsibility is over. It's not that you have to give a complaint in a particular format. You have to give a complaint. Uh, in writing or through an email on which we can act. So we take the case up, we ask a member to investigate. If we find a prima facie case against it, then we take it to the disciplinary committee for the architects or we take it to, you know, or we write to the concerned municipal authority or the secretaries or the chief secretaries and tell them that this is happening and try to uh, correct it at their level. But you, the council okay. has to be informed. So Okay, uh, so let's come to the whole act and the amendments now, which is also the next uh, big set of worries. Uh, or let's say, I would not. This, this worries, also. Uh, huh. Okay, yes. Yeah. Maybe you were saying something. No, I'm, I was saying, I mean, we can, we can work across the country if all of us work together and bring to notice so many things that are happening. Uh, so many violations that are happening or so many irregularities that are happening. If you bring it out to the council, we definitely write to the to the concerned authorities. We have been writing to the concerned authorities. Yeah, now, I I, in, in, in the future that I was talking of, huh, yeah. we will tell you how, what is the framework that we have made to address this issue. Right. And I'll, I'll come back to that. In the end, when I tell you what we will do. That as well. Uh, so the question here is that now, uh, we'll come back to the main act and its amendment. So where does the whole process of amendment lie now? Do we have a draft? Uh, when do we share it with the fraternity? Uh, how does the fraternity get involved? These are the three primary questions uh, as far as the act and amendment is concerned. Actually, I answered this to Gita when you were off the video. We answered this. It is in a stage where we are now looking at it at the final stages. We are looking at it afresh. And then we will be submitting it probably after the lockdown lifts up in a month's time. So that uh, is the stage uh, where it is at the moment. To the ministry. To the ministry. Before that, okay. I have requested, like I told you, all the, we will share it with the fraternity. We will uh, share a document with the fraternity, which will, which will uh, be telling about what the act is all about, why it needs amendment, and what is the importance of the architectural services. And you need to go and need to meet your local representatives, MPs and everything, and build a consensus, which I just discussed earlier. So that is the stage. A uh, lot of people have actually given suggestions. They have been incorporated. They have been evaluated, discussed, and brainstormed in uh, various committees. It's not that the public participation has not happened. Public participation has happened in great uh, amount and uh, over a period of long time. But if you want, we can still open it up. We can still share what we are uh, planning to do. And people can you know, suggest or comment. Uh, so to make it clear, uh, you will put it up on COA website, like a downloadable file, which everybody can go through and right. Right. put forward their suggestions, right? Right. right. Okay. So I think that should send out a clear message that it would be on COA's website for everybody to see. Okay, and uh, so we'll what give, the we'll next have, question is we'll have to that, work within a time uh, frame. Okay. We have to work within a time and, frame, otherwise and, it, it can't be time. When you put it up on the website, the timelines will be mentioned. It will be mentioned and you, you will notice we are now reaching out to architects as well as to institutes uh, almost on a regular uh, basis. And we will send a mail to every architect in the country that the, it has been put up for uh, on the website. So please, if you want to suggest or contribute, please do that. Okay. So the next question would be that, uh, can you briefly explain what would be the procedure once you submit it to the government, then what happens? Does, oh, does the ministry me. approves it or does it have to go to the parliament? Uh, how does it no, work? It because many to. people... It has, it, has, it has to go to the, it has to go to the uh, parliament. Only parliament can amend. Okay. The, yeah. So will it be a full parliament or will, will it, it be a committee of parliament? Of table parliament, it in the parliament. It. Committee of parliament and parliamentarians usually sit before it is tabled at the parliament. They discuss and evaluate 
okay it's all party committee which they will discuss and evaluate and then table it in the parliament uh so there is one particular questions uh, question regarding uh, one of the clause in the act which apparently gives power to uh, of course the person who asked this question has mentioned that it gives power to ceo and iia but uh, just to clarify that iia is not uh, a body which can regulate rules and regulations regarding the profession of architecture it is council which does that so uh, habib to you uh, there is a particular clause number 45 which apparently gives you the power to bring in new rules and regulations so can this uh, part of handling that only architects can practice architecture not be done through that particular clause no no it cannot be done through that clause and why would that be because it says that it gives powers to council to regulate new rules and regulations the rules and regulations are different in the act act is different okay. rules and regulations support the act you know they they are administrative support to the act so the act the basically the act where the services will be defined uh, see i mean the amendment of the act is not an easy thing in the sense that it has to be very specific and very pointed why is it happening and what is to be amended you cannot go and amend the whole act or change the whole language of the act you know uh, it it has to be very 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 specific and we are making it as precise and as, as specific as possible so amendment see there are there are act and there are there are rules and there are regulations these are three independent entities rules and regulations support the implementation of the act so council has the power to make rules and regulations with the permission of this with the approval of the central government but that doesn't mean that council can go itself and amend the act by itself amend the act the act amendment has to happen by the parliament and by the government there is no other option to that okay so even if we define architectural services in regulations even if we if we define even if we define architectural services and regulations somehow or the other or in the rules it still not going to be of any use because it is to be changed in the act itself okay so what i understand for the benefit of the larger audience and many of them are students to put it in simple words it means in order to define further and more elaborately the practice of architecture it cannot be done through the provisions of article 45 of the act uh, so it has to be uh, brought in uh, in the form of a big change in the act itself and that will happen a small only change the process a of small change in the for which both the government and the parliament would be involved Yeah, a small okay. change Even in the act which will have okay. wider and so bigger ramifications. Now the next question is correct, correct. So Thank obviously, you. this whole puts the whole question on to that who is at the helm of the affairs in terms of formulating this. Um, repeat repeat your question. Uh, there was a problem with your audio. Okay, so can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, the question here is now that who is at the helm of affairs within the council? I mean, how does council work? Let's say as far as this amendment is concerned, is there a committee which sits together, reviews earlier old new suggestions, and then puts it forward? Uh, I mean, the larger question, in fact, people would like to know how is the council formed by itself. So if you can briefly. tell that what is the council and then how is council handling this aspect of amendment okay if you see the act the constitution of the council is given there where one architect represents a state and there are other representatives from the iia who are elected five members from the iia community professionals community who are elected then there are five teachers constituency who are the heads of the institutions who are elected to the council and then there are other representatives from the cp cpwd and from the mes and you know other representatives of other governments there are there's a institution of engineers the aict nominees so council constitutes about 53 members in all that's the constitution of the council and when we have to work on any any issue or any any concern needs to be addressed we formulate a committee either a committee or a sub committee or a steering committee depending on the importance of the job and uh, then the committee works on it gives recommendation as per the mandate given to the committee and then 
it is taken up by the executive committee and approved or disapproved in the executive committee and after the executive committee deliberates on it it is put up to the full council for discussion and approval that's the standard administrative procedures which is to be followed okay so two questions arising out so of in the this, amendment to the acts yes so you are forming a small committee is what we understand or it's the committee formed. has already been formed by the previous by the previous body a lot of work has happened on it the report is there with us what we are saying we are right. forming another committee to just look into it if there are any newer ramifications or newer issues which need to be incorporated so we'll have a very okay. small committee of learned people and uh, wide representation and we will uh, take their opinion and then we we'll discuss in the ec in the council and then we'll send it to the council a lot of work has happened oh, and the thank document you for is that most answer. ready now right okay now the further extension of this question is that now that we have understood how councils are or how council is formed and how subcommittees are formed uh, the many uh, so we understand the overall structure is that majority is architects uh, uh, predominantly represented by the state architects appointed by the state governments then you have five architects who are representing iia which are supposed to be representing the practicing architect segment then there is a constituency of architectural institutes who represent the their concerns on to the council and there are some others who are from the allied fields or let's say related as set of actually like engineer institute of engineers institute of service there are two members there are two members yeah, from yes right there are two members from so the question is one survey yeah correct so the question here is that are architects represented in similar such bodies across the country like they are representing on our council yes yes exactly yes Okay, so yes, sir, can are. we give an Our example? Our vice president is a is a member of the ICT committee. Yeah, there it's a reciprocal basis. Okay, it's a reciprocal so basis that, arrangement where, as, let's say, in the AICT, our vice president is uh, representing as in the AICT. So it's a reciprocal okay. arrangement. Okay, okay. I mean, so we get almost the, one or two letters every day for nominations or uh, representations in other various bodies. Okay, so so it basically, I think the question was aimed at to understand that. architects are also equally required in many other professional bodies not just in their own organization and i think that's good to hear that architects are there and contributing uh, in other um, important bodies now here is a question probably a difficult one for you which says that uh, uh, coa should be more uh, fraternity centric rather than council centric uh, can we keep you know can you say something about that This, so this actually, actually we have realized yeah, this. Yeah. This is not a it's not a difficult question to answer. You are making it difficult by saying it is difficult, but it's very easy to answer. <laughs> okay, so I go with is, your words. What we are doing, we realize this. See, I mean, we realize the image beating of the council that is happening, or the perception that the council has in the fraternity, is mainly because of there was lack of communication between our own members. we were not telling them what we are doing they were expecting something and we were not doing what was what was supposed to be done so we have taken this absolutely head on and we are we are making a, a coa social uh, kind of an organization which will take care uh, rakesh kushwa i think is also in the in the he is also attending the webinar he is working very actively on it with lot of younger people in it we are going to change the face of the council we are going to change this kind of system of communication that we are having and it will become an interactive platform where you can post a uh, lot of things out of contents it will be content driven it will be you know we are reaching out to uh, to people we have a instagram handle at the moment we have a facebook page we have a twitter account but tell me how many of you are following it still there are one lakh architects and we don't have more than 3000 followers on uh, on instagram or twitter so i mean look at yourself you follow start following after this session let's have about a lakh of followers in each of the accounts and you will see the difference but very shortly in a weeks time we are rolling this out where you will see the changed perception and the changed uh, face of the council where we are reaching out to everyone where we are going to hold hands we want to say council is yours come work towards it work okay. for it i think that's a very good point i think through this platform we would urge each one of who was present in this session and also outside to spread this word around that we all have to join cos twitter and instagram handle and uh, take it um, beyond the expected levels of our president take it forward, okay yes. so the next question yes. Uh, yes does in this whole amendment are they been uh, are you thinking about uh, 
having certain kind of powers because this is felt that right now coa does not have enough power to direct municipal corporations or municipal bodies or government bodies to implement the act uh, there are many examples we have seen across the country where municipalities have been asking architects to re-register in fact there are cases where municipalities have fee to even register with them so uh, would you like to say something about it are you doing something about it um will coa act or this i'll, I'll answer this act, or acting act for them all as well i'll answer this in two ways one is a very very philosophical way of answering this where i would say that power is the one which corrupt so why do you want power number one the power so called power that you're talking of is not there Uh, so to say, because of the act itself, and I'm sure if this small correction is done in the act, where the definition of architectural services is very clearly defined, uh, it will change the whole scenario. It's a very small amendment, but it's going to have wider and longer and larger ramifications on the entire practice of architecture and the fraternity of the country. So uh, that so-called power will uh, will will come in. but we don't want we want a more democratic institution we want a more transparent and we want a more uh, more inclusive kind of uh, approach at the council and i am very happy that my entire executive committee and the council members agree so that we need to have a more democratic approach rather than you know we have uh, having a centralized power somewhere so we want to be inclusive of everyone no. i want i understand every yeah i understand. every no, architect of my yeah i understand what you are trying to say but i think the question was more about the the act or some kind of a provision in that which allows coa to enforce whatever it wants to yes, with the municipal absolutely. corporation or other common it bodies will, more clearly with the municipal corporations to, the issue is has been resolved in lot of places where our people have gone our architects friends from the iia or from Uh, representatives have gone and talked to the concerned municipal authorities, and they have been able to convince them to not have the architects re-register. We have been writing to so many municipal corporations, and that is not a major issue. The major issue is implementation of the of the of the title of architect, which entitles to practice to service uh, architectural services. That is, once that happens, a lot of things and a lot of issues will automatically get resolved by that one change. Is what I personally feel. But the re-register. Registration is an issue which every architect faces practic practically in reality, but that can be addressed if it is uh, uh, brought to the notice of the council and it, if it is addressed at that municipal level. It has happened in Chennai very recently, where our very enthusiastic group of architects and they, they have gone, very influential people have gone and talked to the authorities, and it has been addressed to a great extent. It has so happened in so many other places. Yeah. so the other issue with such kind of a thing is that you know let's say if there is an issue with bangalore municipal corporation or hyderabad municipal corporation it is taken up all the way to you know uh, delhi to your office so i'm saying is there a possibility of kind of a state body or a state level council which can address these issues locally uh, is that something that sounds like a good idea to you i was talking of decision if you know the interviews yeah Yeah, in in a, one of the recent interviews, uh, immediately given after the uh, taking over of the presidency and the vice presidency, we have talked of decentralization of the council. Decentralization of the council does not mean that we are going to violate the the provisions of the council and the act and the rules and the regulations. But decentralization happens many ways. It can happen in many ways. Now coming to this, uh, because since we are on profession and the issues concerning the profession, we have made a professional committee. to look into the problems and the issues of the committee this committee is being fed from the outreach initiatives that we have started doing this is also a kind of an outreach initiative where we first we did in chandigarh then we did in chennai and bangalore and we are supposed to do 10 of them across the country but because of this lockdown we are stuck up but now we will do it on a council webinar or a web portal where we will have these out initiatives so the, the result and the minutes of the outreach committee outreach initiative is fed to the professional committee to look into issues across the country and they will come up with a uh, with a document which will be fed and now we are saying in the in the council meeting last in the previous council meeting we discussed this how will this be effectively uh, organized that every member from every state 
who is representing the council will be the nodal person to take this issue forward if there's a issue let's say in maharashtra or or telangana or andhra or anywhere else the representative from that state will be involved in the process of solving that issue so a sub committee a nodal committee which you call it the state level is being made where this representative is the head of that is the convener of that committee and it will have three or four people practicing architects one academician and a constituents the 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 formation of that committee has been decided how the structure of the committee would be we'll have a young architect we'll have a senior architect we'll have an academician and things like that so we are working this out so there will be a nodal committee in every state and the main professional committee would be feeding issues which are coming up or arising out of uh, you know various outreach initiatives that we are taking and this will be fed to this nodal committee and nodal committee will look at it at level now sitting in delhi and sitting in you know in a in a central place addressing a matter in kerala or northeast or anywhere else becomes a little difficult you know it's not practically possible to go and you know address each and every commissioner or a secretary or whatever so this nodal committee is going to do that job one nodal committee let's say for example maharashtra if the if the representative is from bombay but we have a large state so we will have representation on this committee from every part of the state so that the entire state is covered and how soon do you think this is going to happen this is already in place the professional committee has a couple had couple of meetings is already in place the nodal subcommittee structure is ready and the, the the as soon as this outreach initiative ends now we are going to do it online and through webinars as soon as that is done it will be uh, uh, it will be implemented you can say we are already halfway there okay so i will end this session of the amendments part with a very interesting question that has come that uh, what kind of amendments can be brought in to ensure good architecture happens in the country that's a very contentious issue uh now what happens is uh, uh a practicing architect or a registered architect who is authorized to design a building or sign a building uh does not take onus or authorship of that building does not take the responsibility of that building and as such uh, as such the quality of architecture which is being produced is what i think you are asking uh, quality of architectural work the design content of the architectural work is one aspect but there are other aspects also so involved in in the entire process which is the kind of services that you give the kind of kind of project execution that you do and after the project execution the safety and security of its occupants and the users is also a very important part of architectural service so uh, a registered architect has to take the onus of all the four aspects that go into into the building process of building and when that happens the the quality will automatically improve and the quality also needs to be improved at the educational level at the institutional level where the practicing architects feel tremendous gap between the product that is coming out into the market if i may use the simile or the students who are let's say coming out into the market to enter into the professional field there appears to be a lot of gap between the quality of output that is coming out and the professionals are perpetually uh, you know distress that the kind of students that graduate from all the institutions so we need to augment the quality of education that is happening in our country and until that happens the quality of architecture in our country will not uh, improve and we are taking measures in that front also uh, we are strengthening the, the trcs we are reformatting the trcs uh, into a standard setting body and things like that and and that is being rolled out there is a steering committee made of all uh, individuals and intellectuals who are a part of that committee we have had one meeting and we are now carrying it forward to strengthen the educational system and to improve the quality of not only the faculty but also the students who are graduating from the institutions okay i think that's a nice way of transiting into the next segment which is practice and you have touched already upon improving the quality of architecture and education so there is one question which is a very interesting question uh, i think for most of us is that ki Uh, why are we in this state of affair as if now where our pay packages or salaries or earnings even as percentage of fee that we get is not very good so how do we look at this and what can council uh, advise help um, 
the fraternity in this regard. Uh, especially the young architects, you know, they feel that they are getting less than even the daily wages which are given to a laborer or a mason today. Most of uh, you won't, won't agree to this, to what I say or what I keep saying about this. It is we ourselves who are responsible for this. The council is not responsible for this. No one else can be responsible. We, we as architects are responsible for doing this where we are and the state that way we are. Why do you demand? Why do you demand lesser fee? Why do you accept lesser fee? Why do you, you know, why does a senior architect for that matter or an established architect supplant another architect? Why does a senior architect charge lesser fees than what it should be charged? You know, these are issues that we need to answer our, with our own hearts and with our clear conscience as to why we do this. See, let us understand one thing. Generation of a fee. An Apple phone is sold at a premium price while any other phone may not be sold at a premium price because Apple is demanding that price because of the quality that it is giving. Have we introspected ever what is the quality of services that we give? Have we introspected ever what is the level of drawings that we give to our projects? What is the kind of technical expertise that we bring into the uh, to the table? You know, as a consultant, we need to we need to answer these questions ourselves. We need to introspect our. Yeah. So uh, I. So we, I... we actually you know the problem with the problem with the commit. No, let me let me finish. The problem with we architects is that we want to have a very nice delicious cake, eat it too, splash it all over the wall and say this was not good. So if we are able to to demand that price that we would want and that price will come with the quality of product. You know, we are not, we are not giving quality services. Let us understand this. And to address this, uh, we have formulated a committee. We are very shortly coming up at Texas and I will elaborate at the end. So now you can put in thin. Okay. So I, what I was trying to come into was there are two related you? issues which I thought you could address it. One is that this whole scale of fee which is you know part of the Council's Act and the, the subsequent uh, regulations to it. Uh, many people have doubts whether is it recommendary or is it a rule or is it a law. So that could Get kind of get plugged into your. It is recommended. What I was trying to do, and the second part is that you know, is there an oversupply of architects, and that because of that there is a huge competition, and in order to beat that competition, we reduce our price. So uh, uh, these are the two questions which I thought I will put in there so that you could answer it comprehensively because we are also running short of time now. We need to open the floor for a lot of questions, and I still have about. 20, 30 questions. So I'm going to now club practice and education together. So could you answer these two? What is this whole scale of fee, which is part of our act and in terms of its real status, uh, legally speaking, and uh, is there a oversupply of architects? So has council done any kind of a demand supply study? And does that study relate to the number of colleges opening of such new colleges? So would you like to throw some light on that? Yeah, if I forget something, you remind me. See, I personally feel, and it is the standard trend and practice across the world, that the fees cannot be stipulated by a regulatory authority or a regulatory body. In our case, it is a recommendatory thing which is being told to public that if these are the services which are being you know, given by the architect, then this is the tentative fee which is to be charged. So uh, it is not compulsory, it is, not, it is only recommendatory. The fee that you demand, the charges that you take are governed by market forces and the quality of the product that you give. It's a, it's a simple economic principle. We had a very interesting meeting with one of the principal secretaries. I will not name uh, the gentleman. And regarding this issue, ki why do you, why does your department offer 1% fee when it should be 3% or when it should be 5% or whatever? You should, let's have a discussion on this. He said, there is no discussion on this. We are very clear. You look within yourself. Ask your fraternity not to quote. There are people who are quoting 0 0.5, 0 0.3%, 0.1%. Fee, you know? why, are we, why, are, why are architects quoting 0.1%? Tell me if my department has said we will pay you 1% fee. And none of the architects quote less than 3 if that is what your council says. Or it's a recommendation that it has to be 3%. I'm giving you a broad example. If it is to be 3%, if the market trend is 3% and the council 
council also recommends is three percent, and we are saying it is one percent. Why are the architects accepting it? Why are X quoting less percent? If none of you, if none of you will quote or accept the job, then we will be forced to pay you three percent, which brings down to a serious introspection at our own levels, where we need to understand why we are not united on this front. We need to stay united. We need to stay, you know, even if it is a recommended principle, not one architect, not one architect who is registered, not one architect who is registered should be able to quote less than that, even if it is recommended to So when it comes to fees, I don't think any regulatory body should ever do that because it also clashes with the MRTP Act. Uh, could you elaborate on, on what did you say the last? What, which act? Monopolies, monopolies and restrictive trade practices. Monopolies and restrictive trade practices. Okay, so I would like to come in here that there is also a superseding act called that act of uh, you know the rule which deals with the procurement of goods and services, and it has an kind of an overlapping role over the services that the country hires, especially all the projects where public money is involved. So I think that could be a separate debate, but. Uh, I understand that the concern was that no, would I'll, the scale of fee. Uh, I, I can I'll, I'll, I'll brief you on that. The procurement of architectural services is governed by Ministry of Finance, where they have two documents. They have made very clear documents: procurement of contractual services and pro contractor services, and pro procurement of uh, architectural services or any other consultancy services. And this document is referred to by the by the Vigilance Commissioner, the CVC, right? The, it is the CVC guidelines which tells the department, the government department, to not overpay, irrespective of the act or irrespective of the directives or the governance that you have, irrespective of that. So the CVC, for example, let's say you are an office, officer of a government and you are paying 3% fee. Let's say you're paying 3% fee and I have come to you saying I will do this job in 2%. What makes you give that job? To the three percent guy, your career is at stake because because of the CVC guidelines, which say the lowest procurement is to be given. We are talking to them. We have written to them. We have not got a reply from the CVC, and we are also uh, working on the procurement of services. Why is the? I mean, unfortunate part is all the government departments do not follow the procurement policy of consultancy services. They follow only procurement of contractual services. Right, and that is the problem. So that you will have. You know, in architectural services, you'll have uh, force majeure or other things. Yeah. Okay, sorry, I will be keep doing this to you now to you know keep cutting short our answers. Quickly coming back to this whole demand and supply, are we oversupplying architects, and is that creating a competition? No, I don't think so. Although we have done a committee on the future of architectural uh, uh, profession in the in the in the in the country which also determines uh, how many architectural schools shall we open, how many architects will graduate in the, in the country from a particular region. We are working on it. We'll implement it from next year onwards, next, next academic year onwards. But at the moment, I don't see there is a, uh, there is a, there is a oversupply of architects at the moment. In fact, we are falling short of architects. We need 666,000 architects up till 9, 2030. So that's a very interesting statement. You're at, you're actually saying that we need more architects, and here we are where we are not able to demand higher fee for our services. So I think that uh, gives us a lot of food for thought. Uh, there is a very interesting comment that has come from a student. Okay, now he says that we are taught so many things in our course. You know, like you take a, a consideration into environment, social, cultural issues, um, traditions, customs, which common person does not understand. And ultimately, you know, he pays us uh, very little money also, even if though we are able to talk about the big picture and telling them how beautiful the design has come. So he pays us less. Where he pays us more is the respect that we get in the society. And with this whole Supreme Court ruling, they feel that even the respect is not taken away. So I think which is a very interesting comment coming from a student. Uh, I think we should all think about it. And I'm sure uh, what you have said about recommendations uh, in terms of I would, Sorry. I would say it's a matter of introspection. It's a matter of it's a matter of introspection that we need to do. I want to ask these young architects or graduates who have just graduated, how many of your clients have come and seen 
you know, ki, come and ask you your qualification, कौन से स्कूल से पढ़े हो कौन से कॉलेज से ग्रेजुएट हुए हो नो वन डज दैट यू नो यूर वर्क स्पीक्स टू योर सेल्फ योर क्वालिटी ऑफ वर्क स्पीक्स एंड इट टेक्स टाइम इट्स नॉट यू नो कि आपने गए मार्केट से पेन खरीद के ले आए तो योर ब्रांड इज नॉट लाइक दैट इट्स नॉट इवन सेल फोन विच इज एस्टेब्लिश नो इन द मार्केट इट इज दी इट इज अ लॉन्ग ड्रॉन प्रोसेस आई ऑलवेज टेल माई स्टूडेंट the younger graduates that you are if you are coming you need to be patient you need to build your brand until that happens you cannot demand your fee so uh, another interesting point that has been raised is that ki when we do such good work and society is not aware that is the basic premise because of which we feel architects have not yet become an important part of the society then why are architects not allowed to advertise and how do people <laughs> architects reach out to society there's i mean one is of course scene. the campaign part reaching out why why should uh, advertising ourselves not be a, a way to go ahead especially right. these days uh, of course digitally we are able to do many things but this is a question why should architects not be allowed to advertise right that's a very valid question a very pertinent question and uh, when the legislation was done or when it was uh, the act was drafted probably uh, there is there is a difference between a professional and a difference between a businessman so that is that fine line which divides which makes you a professional and makes you a businessman so there were restrictions on the on the uh, on the advertising of an architect but we are looking into it into the amendment and i think uh, you know, we will address that issue adequately okay sir another issue is this whole competency of architects in the market uh, we know that we have tough competition with large engineering firms who tend to do you know all services under one window and then architects have to compete with them and as per cois act we are not allowed to have partners who are non architects uh, where does this fit into the whole scheme it in fact it probably restricts our growth so if today i am just using this uh, platform not to uh, kind of Uh, demean the profession of engineering but i'm just saying if i have to compete with the engineers i must be able to uh, offer similar kind of services with partners who would be with me and i compete with another engineering firm uh, as long as it is headed by an architect uh, the architect could have a majority stake in that firm it should, should be called an architect's firm yes we need to address this i mean it's been almost 72 right so how many years before the nature of practice has changed nature of the complexity of practice and and we really look into it and need to see how it can be incorporated into the into the act which will which will facilitate multidisciplinary practice which will facilitate uh, multidisciplinary coll- collaboration this is actually a big impediment in our progress at the moment where you cannot collaborate with other multidisciplinary approach and have an architectural practice we need to really look into this Oh, so that's we need I to change with times. Uh, the the I we need to change with times. And I the, think I'm sorry, it will be very encouraging for many of the architects. Uh, sorry, please go ahead. Yeah, the complexity of profession has changed. You know, the complex it has become so complex. You know, in a project, a bigger project, you need about twenty twenty five consultants to work with. And I need to give comprehensive services to my clients. and when i give a comprehensive service i am the leader of the project now because i am unable to give comprehensive services i am losing my status as a as a consultant right and the another issue which uh, somebody has raised here is that ki what kind of a program coa is planning to launch in order to improve the skill set of the architects are you planning to improve uh, introduce any kind of a cpd that is the you know um, co- continuous professional development program where yes. architects would you know, update the yes. themselves we are going to yes i like discuss about the trcs uh, we are trying to change the we are we are actually changing the format and the framework of the trc to in, to to incorporate three or four things uh, the professionals the young architects the, the academician and the students so these are three or four issues that we are addressing where the augmentation of the skill basic skills and continuous updation of knowledge will happen and we are going to facilitate that at all levels at all the four levels so all these practicing and then we are we are ultimately hoping that there will be a professional qualifying examination or a competence examination uh, where you will need to appear for an examination for uh, to get a practicing architect's license and that uh, is not a perpetual license it has to be upgraded periodically by 
by participating in continuous education programs of the council or any any anything else that we deem fit. So this has to happen. Once you are a registered architect, it doesn't mean that you are a registered architect for life. You need to constantly update. Once, for example, a medical practitioner, a doctor, a surgeon has to constantly keep upgrading himself or you know uh, keep uh, get, get latest technological uh, developments that are happening in the country. Similarly, architects will also have to do. You have to update yourself. You have to update your technical knowledge. You have to upgrade your skills and you have to upgrade the services that you're providing. And then only the license should be uh, renewed or continued. So we are working on that. And of course, it will happen with the amendment. But before the amendment happens, we have already started work on uh, creating an institution of standards which will take care of not only the practicing architects, not only the academics, but the practicing architects as well. Okay. So the next question is that it looks like that uh, there are a lot of people are interested that COA should now take, you know, pay more attention to the profession side till now it has been seen as a body which is regulating education. Uh, so do you see that happening? Are you going to split your energies, if not equally, more towards profession and less towards That's education? already happening. That's what, that's what I said. That's what I said earlier, uh, okay. some time ago, that uh, we are concentrating on the profession as well as the academics. We cannot say we cannot, we will not concentrate on academics. We cannot say we will not concentrate on professions. We are going to concentrate on both the issues. And we are already started addressing the, the issues of the practice. And... Uh, we will have an equal, uh, no step uh, motherly treatment to any aspect of our practice and fraternity. We okay. already started working. We have discussed this quite a lot earlier. Okay. The next question is related to again architectural education. People have written to say that you know we are talking about a very creative profession, but look at our curriculum across the country. It is more or less uniform and pretty boring. Uh, so how much uh, freedom? Does individual institute have to modify the curriculum and make it more interesting? Absolute freedom. Uh, you're saying there is no restriction. It, it, it is the. Program. It is the. There, there's a, there's a, there's a certain framework that you know you you cannot violate the basic fundamental framework of the entire system, but there is no restriction on improving or being creative or involving your applying your mind and institution on that the failure at this uh, failure of this aspect is basically with the concerned universities the board of studies or whatever uh, regulatory authorities you have for education which have not gone beyond the mundane to impart education in a very innovative, creative, or a different way. You take the easy way out. I'm sorry to say, but this is what it is. Reality is. How many universities have gone beyond what is prescribed by the council, the framework of the council? How many universities or institutes have you know, taken a step to be more creative in the way that they impart education? There's, there's no restriction from the council as long as the basic framework is made. So I, I, I implore all the uh, concerned head of the universities, board of studies, or the institutions to, you know, and what can be done within the framework to improve the quality of education. So that is that is a part which each academician or administrative academician has to look into this, this aspect. Okay, and with you, uh, you mentioning that there will be an exit exam now in order to get a license, definitely it kind of indicates that there will be less and less kind of a in uh, control or let's say interference. In regulations have to be absolutely. Regulations law. have to be minimum. Regulations have to okay. be minimum. Control uh, has to be minimum. That is for okay. sure. Okay. okay. Uh, the next question is related to that. Uh, how is the recognition, like the registration with council, recognized world over? Uh, there are a lot of young architects and many of senior architects who have gone abroad, settled there. Um, many of them have written in uh, saying that the, uh, the, the, those countries don't recognize our degrees and our registration with COA. So, uh, would you like to say something no, about it's, that? It's partly, it is partly correct. It's partly correct, partly wrong. Uh, the issue is very contentious. I mean, when I discuss about uh, uh, employment opportunities or education op opportunities abroad, I am criticized that I am not taking care of those so-called Farsi architects in the country and other issues that are uh, that are plaguing our profession in our country. And why are you looking at uh, other foreign countries and so on, so on and so forth? 
but the issue is our degree is not recognized is not a correct degree is recognized as a very very important and a very uh, uh, good quality education that happens in our country is recognized for post graduate qualifications almost everywhere in the world for employment there is a little problem because uh, uh, or practice as well if you want to go and practice in any other country your license is not recognized uh, your registration status is not recognized it is only because of the exit exam that we don't have and the pcbs that we don't have okay so there are a lot of questions which so are we are not at a paritable level we are not at a paritable level with other countries where after the graduation you appear in a practicing architects qualifying examination and get a status of a registered architect right so that is the problem now what is happening is uh, uh, most of there are there are there are accord called the canberra accord which is which is related to accreditation a lot of countries which have signed the canberra accord have uh, are refusing to give employment uh, to our architects or graduates from our institutes who are not accredited so we are working with the nba uh, to work out a architectural accreditation framework independently to address this issue but uh, the basic fundamental issue is your license is not accepted abroad anywhere else where there is a qualifying examination and uh, the reciprocal basis is not there although we are talking to the sri lankan board of architects we are talking to bangladesh we are talking to malaysia we are talking to singapore at the moment on to work on a reciprocal basis Okay. Uh, there are a lot of questions again related to the way we teach architecture, the course content, and the way it is structured, and what subjects are we teaching in that. And obviously, your uh, suggestion saying that there will be an exit exam now in order to practice architecture, that basically means that there will be a lot of freedom for people to pursue what they want to do. If they want to study English literature with uh, design of building, they could do that. Is that how it is going to be looked at? Because a lot of people have raised that is already this there in why. Uh, sorry, I, I, we couldn't hear you that clearly. Uh, it is already in place at the moment. If you read the new education policy, the NEP, which was to be implemented from this academic year, but has been deferred, I guess, for a little while. But it gives you a horizontal and a lateral flexibility to have all these multidisciplinary approaches into architecture or any other education for that matter. If a student wants to. if you so on so is study economic can and yet little of multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary approach so that is already there it has been worked upon there are some other issues i think which they are discussing the implementation of the nep that's why it's not being rolled out now but after the, the those issues are sorted i think uh, uh, this will already be in place okay so uh, if i want to simplify what you have said that it looks like that we are heading towards a regime where education of architecture is going to now get delinked with practice of architecture where uh, education would be now more free you could do more holistic uh, you know knowledge sharing and knowledge uh, uh, imparting knowledge in the institutes and practice is something if you want to practice then you write that exam get a license and carry on with that uh, is that how it is going to be absolutely yes that's that's how it is in a nutshell but, but okay when you talk of uh, education uh, when you talk of education now at the moment we are the standard setting authority and we are the regulatory authority as well and we are the registering registering authority as well and morally this is not uh, right and correct the thought process at the moment is that the regulatory body and the standard setting body has to be independent so and and also the fact that we need to do away with the licensing raj so called and we need to have minimum regulation and maximum quality that is how it will work in the future uh, not only with the government not only with the but but that's the that's the order of the day now where you have minimum control and minimum regulation while the 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 output that you are striving at in your institutes will determine the quality and the future of your institute okay so uh, that's a very uh, interesting point that you have made now Uh, we are just coming to end of this whole uh, session on education and entering into the general so i'll quickly go through uh, some very interesting questions which have come now um, can we demand for a rajya sabha seat for architects so that we can push all our <laughs> issues into the parliament much easily <laughs> let's try that 
<laughs> but it's, it's a good, I mean, I've been telling my students, I have not been telling in public at all, wherever I have given lectures and, you know, spoken as keynote uh, speaker, I have been, in the end, I have been telling that the biggest problem of architects and the architectural community is that very few of us take politics as a as a future uh, you know prospect or as a, as a career the moment we start doing that the moment we start infiltrating into the into the bureaucratic ranks or the political ranks uh, it will be difficult for us so we need to be politicians we need to become ministers we need to become mps mlas we need to be politically active to make our profession stronger is what i personally feel but there is one more issue. We need to shorten the duration of the course, which is not a part of this uh, discussion. But since it is a five-year course, most of the architects lose out on the opportunity of going into administrative services right. because of the age barrier. And, and even if they go into education services, the rise that happens is not as, you know, uh, and, uh, any other graduate who is a three-year graduate or a four-year graduate has an edge over the over the architects uh, who are coming through a five-year uh, graduation process. So we lose out on the bureaucracy and the administrative part of it. But uh, all architects, I should, I think, are capable enough and good politicians. The way I see the reaction of our community, I feel we'll become very good politicians. So okay. let us take it as a career. And the moment we take it, we will we'll be in a better situation and a better position. So, to on control a lighter, so on a lighter note, there will be better politics in I and COA, right? <laughs> there is. I mean, I, I you, don't, you don't think it is better now? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say anything right now. Okay, that's good. Now, uh, another very interesting question that has come is that uh, what would you like to say to young architects uh, in this time of recession, global economic recession? Um, so, I mean, there is a genuine concern. Uh, I know it, it, it's not something that council can do anything, but what would you like to give a message to such people who would like who are really worried about their future. See, see, as I'm not talking as a president of the council, but as a as a as an elderly person in, in the profession, a senior in the profession, uh, this these times, this is not the first time that the economic recession has happened. In in my span of practice of the last 30, 32 years, it has happened twice or thrice. I think it's a cycle which repeats every eight to nine years. If you study economics, you will find that it's a cycle which repeats every eight to ten years. So it has happened thrice before in my career. So the only thing that that uh, uh, should uh, that we should do is to introspect of what we are and to hone up our skills to do other meaningful work uh, where you can contribute to the society uh, and where you can you know uh, uh, reach out to other other uh, sections of society. But basically, this should be utilized to hone up your uh, skills and talent and you know and augment your technical skills, creative skills, and use the uh, period positively rather than negatively and rather than thinking about it, yeah, it's, it's not, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, that shouldn't be the attitude. Let us be very positive about it and including uh, the judgment or excluding the judgment, just don't think about it. Let us be very positive and let us work towards strengthening our profession. So let us, let us concentrate on that. I am going to reach out to you very soon where I'll ask you to give 30 seconds uh, clips for our social media platforms. Well, I'll ask you what you're doing in your... And one interesting part is, you know, I've been on video calls and webinars uh, quite often in this lockdown period. Everyone is going a beard. Every hour. So, uh, we're going to get back to all of you very shortly. Uh, there is one more very interesting. Um, so this is a general section. So questions are going to be completely unrelated from the previous one to the next one. Um, now we are we, coming to the most difficult part. Uh, not necessarily <laughs> difficult, but probably <laughs> interesting. Uh, somebody has suggested: Can we bring in a rule or an amendment in the Act which links our fee to the turnover of the client, IT returns of the client? So you say X percentage of his previous year IT returns would be architect's fee. No. You don't think that's a good idea? Big N O. Okay. Um, that's one more, one more question here is again about CO and IA. Why do we need these two bodies? Why can't these two bodies come together? See, the role and purpose of these two bodies are absolutely independent. The IA is a body of professionals which looks after the professional issues, which looks after 
after the you know i should look after the improving the quality of the profession interact uh, increasing the interaction amongst the amongst the professionals creating platform where you are looked up to as a as a, a respectable professional in the society and there are so many other mandates of the iim iim ka mandate is not to regulate the profession or education and that is the mandate of the coa but we are saying now we need to work together because they are part of the same uh, uh, same body and we should be you know same fraternity and we should work together we should uh, uh, the iia and the coa should work hand in hand and there are a lot of activities that we have planned uh, which, which are outside the so called mandate of the council but we are doing it in the interest of the profession so the iia should come forward and you know uh, come forward and 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 work with the council to to augment what we are doing the two institutions which cannot merge because because of the mandate that is given to each body is independent uh, the next question is who should be our boss mhrd or ministry of urban development uh because many you is all by di- diplomacy uh, advances the- okay but uh, at an academic level would you like to explain the relationship at least that uh, see is architecture profession seen as an academic one or is it seen as an industry profession so that we can make the connection accordingly i mean, i understand you don't have to answer it specifically it is, saying it is we are both. better with it is it is both no i mean see i'll tell you i mean, i mean see if you see nift national institute of fashion technology is with the textile department or uh, law is with ministry of law you know and so on and on if you see uh, uh, medicine is with health and so on and on uh, but we are uh, in in with education at the moment uh, it is a uh, it's a it's a question which can be answered by the government or by the ministries respective ministries many ministries are willing to take us in but in the is the issue is ki who is going to leave you so it's a, it's a it's a difficult question which i can answer in probably 6 months down the line okay uh, another very interesting question is about the kind of architecture we are practicing and how we are so much integrated into the approval process and sanctioning process and all uh, most of the time buildings which are constructed in rcc uh, in so called conventional building typology are easy to get your approval well and also the noc and you know completion certificate but what happens when there are so many architects who are designing in mud and wood and many other ways uh, apparently there is an issue with these kind of buildings where authorities don't accept them as a conventional and stable and safe structure so they are hesitant in kind of issuing noc so uh, would council like to address any such concerns you know what kind of work we do and we face it in every project the problem is only rcc construction is taken as a monolithic construction and there is a code for it but for any other i think we have uh, lost habib's audio yes there seems to be an internet connectivity issue give me a moment i'll connect with him and get back and how much more time we have sonam because it's already 1 o'clock i think we should now uh, quickly switch over to uh, the question answer session uh, live yeah uh, shrini i have sent you a bunch of uh, questions on whatsapp i don't know if you saw them okay that have been asked on the chat so i've just summarized a few that i thought we could take if you want to take any because it'd be crazy uh leaving through the 99 150 odd comments that are there so you can call with names i've given you in case you want to call some of them or you want to look up further and okay yeah so uh, what we could do is uh, if you could just uh, help us understand how much time we have uh, on this session uh, maybe another 20 minutes more okay that be okay yes so once we get habib back then i can start uh, uh, raising these questions 
Uh, of course, there are some very interesting ones uh, which have come up, which uh, one of them also deals with the current situation of um, Corona and related uh, trade impact. So there are a couple on representation within the council which can be clubbed together. Yes, Akhirat yeah. Habib is here. Right. Now can you hear me? Yes, yes, loud and clear. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Welcome. Sorry, there was a break uh, in the connection. Yeah. So I think, you know, the last question which I was asking you was um, uh, that we need to end this session and we were talking about um, how do we look at um, architects and the whole profession vis-a-vis -vis our ministries and other things. The last question in this particular interesting segment is that uh, can COA propose a national insurance policy for architects because now that many corporations, many development authorities are penalizing architects for violation and you know if buildings are not safe, um, how would you like to react to this? Yes, this is a very valid point which was brought out in the Bangalore uh, outreach initiative by architect Mahesh, uh, where we talked of professional indemnity and professional insurance. Uh, we have not actually worked on it, but we have taken down as a very valid point in the professional issues. And we will be talking to insurance companies uh, as and when this policy is formulated to work out a, uh, a good package or a, a reasonable package for the architectural community. And this will be more pertinent if the amendment happens so soon, uh, if the amendment happens very soon and the professional qualifying examination and the responsibility comes with the, uh, with the status of being a registered architect. So this insurance will be a very integral part of the whole thing. Okay, so I think with this, we have uh, more or less come to end of our uh, sec section on the general questions. There is one question which I know is not probably the right platform, but I would still read it out, uh, which is something to do with the Central Vista project in Delhi. Um, I know many people look at it as a Delhi-based project, though it is. It's not just for Delhi. I think the whole architects of the whole country are concerned. So the question was, why were architects of the country not informed of this project? Uh, so that's the question you can choose to answer or not answer since it was addressed to you. I'm asking this question. Well, I am not in a position to answer that question, actually. Right. Okay. So we'll leave it at that. I'm sure there are many other platforms available to all of us where this question has been discussed. Uh, while we were conducting this whole Q&A with you, uh, we, uh, we have received a lot of questions online through the chat. And uh, the right. ASH team has done a wonderful job of shortlisting some of them. And I'm going to ask you few questions and then we will switch over to the online thing. Uh, there is one question from uh, Vibhuti Sajdev from the Ansel School of Architecture where she says that how, what is our outlook, What how are we looking at this present scenario of you know, the pandemic and how it has affected the, all the labor um, which is on construction site and they are so much integral to our profession. So your thoughts on that? See, the effect is obvious and we are seeing the effect that has happened on the construction industry. Architects, can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, we, I, I couldn't hear you. I don't know if the others could hear you. Yes, 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 no problem. Ah, so, obviously, the, the, the effect has been obvious that uh, the construction industry is suffering because of this, uh, is a direct sufferer because of the migrant labor and the actual daily wage labor that work on the site. Although architects are not directly responsible for this, but they are morally responsible for the welfare of the of the labor but uh, specifically i don't know i'm still thinking i'm in a thinking mode where i am thinking as to how is it affecting specifically architects the pandemic and the lockdown and the economic slowdown has affected the entire uh, uh, human race you know so how specifically it is affecting architects i don't know i'm still thinking about it so i won't be able to answer that so easily and so clearly Okay, so there's another question which is again to do with education, which says that we have a very, you know, kind of a strict rule which says that the positions in architectural institutes are related to qualification, not directly related to practice. So how do senior architects
kids get involved in educational institutes if they don't have PhDs and MRs? At the moment, PhD is not compulsory. At the moment, uh, there are various ways and means you can come as visiting faculty, you can come in as design chair, and in the new regulations, we have made provisions for it, which is which will be rolled out very shortly. For senior senior practicing architects to be involved as on a regular basis on a, on a, on a, on a <coughs> on a permanent basis with the institutes. Okay. Uh, the the next question is uh, how is COA planning to uh, get into so, a social campaign or make, creating this awareness about architecture around society? Do you have any definitive plans on that? We have very concrete definitive plans. Rakesh, I can see you there. Can you speak for a minute? We are working out. See, actually, what we are doing is we are working out uh, a COA social. Uh, is there is Rakesh? I'll just if you give me the liberty of Rakesh, just very shortly, briefly. Can you say it in a minute? We are running out of time actually. Can you yes, can you I unmute? I will unmute. Rakesh Kushpa's mic. He's a he's a person who is who is uh, spearheading this, and he will be in a position to brief this uh, very shortly. We are discussing it in the EC today, and we need. We, I am sure we'll have a concrete policy and concrete development on this very soon. But we are, we are, we are working on, we are working on uh, creating an entity, four entities. Uh, I think there's some problem with his mic. It is still not unmuted. Uh, we will, we will have a very Rakesh strong Kushwa social. Sahu is it? No, Kushwa Kushwa. K U S H W A H. Okay, Kushwa Kushwa. Okay, got it, got it. Right, got it. Right. Okay, I think, uh, so um, Gita, I have gone through most of these questions. Uh, I understand we have covered many of them at a very broad level. Uh, it's time now, I think we should uh, open up uh, the whole session to the yeah. people who are still online and would like to ask I'll just, questions. I think Rakesh will take about a minute to, to brief. It's a very important part. I want to reach out to everyone. Okay, yeah. I didn't see him, so is he on? Uh, yeah, he's now, he's, he's now audible. Just before okay. uh, Rakesh yeah. start. So, I, Hi, Srini. Hi, everyone. Uh, so, uh, council needs to reach out there. I think everybody agrees on that. So, what we are doing is we are creating uh, something called a CO web. We are creating something called COA print. We are creating something called COA social. So, these three verticals will work in tandem with each other. COA print will actually look after a web portal as well as a print journal. Uh, and all these these three verticals will act in tandem. COA Social is a platform for youngsters, for everybody to go online, talk to each other, share content and do that kind of a thing. Uh, COA Print would obviously be uh, very specific related to publishing articles, publishing, you know, uh, actual project content. And then the last part is the COA out Outreach. So this event, what we are having right now is part of that. And there will be actually online webinars, online sessions in colleges, online sessions you know, in various uh, chat forums. So the whole idea is to go out there and put council in the middle of all of you so all of you can come together and contribute. Thank you. Thank you, Rakesh. Shini. Uh, yeah, so now I think I request uh, SH team to uh, go online now live with the questions. I think Geeta was trying to yeah, so uh, say something. I was just saying that the questions I had sent you had names along with them. Shahul, you could call out. If you want me to do that, uh, I could do that as well. Uh, Abid Rahim, are you here? If you are, you could unmute yourself and ask your question. There was a question on... Yes. Um, is it the question on IAS training? Actually, on getting practicing architects' uh, views being represented within the council, but whichever you choose. Yeah. So there were a couple of questions. I'll I'll shoot them together. So one was on um, can the is there a need for the reconstitution of the council to be more representative of the large number of practitioners? Uh, there was a second question on. Um, Introducing um, co content on architecture to IAS um, aspirants, IAS uh, qualified during their training to create greater awareness. I'll stick to those two. So, 
So uh, while you're Thank answering you. that, uh, uh, Habib ji, can I just add uh, one more question that came up in the same vein about getting some student representation in the council as well, because there are so many students. I think there was an architect, Dinesh, who was asking the question, is it possible to have some representation on behalf of students as well, so that they are represented, their interests are represented too in the council. That's, those are the two, three questions that you can take. Thanks, Abhin. So, is uh, the representation of practicing architects on the council? At the moment, there are five from the IIA. So the IIA should, Indian Institute of Architects, should ensure that it is only practicing architects and not academicians who are coming onto the council because for academicians, there's already a constituency called the heads of the, uh, heads of the institute. That is one uh, aspect. And the, uh, and the clause in the act says very clearly that the state, one architect from state government, now it's a different matter that the uh, the government architects or chief architects represent uh, in the council from the state is is a different matter, but there is enough adequate representation at the moment in the council of practicing architects. That answers the first part of the question. Yeah. And and the second part was uh, I'm sorry I, I missed it. Second part was what? Uh, Abid, would you like to repeat that? was on uh, introducing content within IAS training. The second training is uh, IAS officers. IAS officers training, yeah. There's a good suggestion. We'll work, work towards it. Someone else has also pointed this out in one of the initiatives that we had uh, undertaken, I think, in Chandigarh. Uh, we are actually now at the moment working with the uh, with the CBSE and the NCRT to introduce architecture as a elective, as a viable elective in 11th and 12th. After that, we'll definitely simultaneously we'll think on this and see how it can be done. But honestly, we have not worked on it, but we will shortly. But at the moment, we have not worked on it. This is the second time this issue has come up, actually. Uh, do and we the have representation... A to the, and the representation of the students, uh, representation of the students on the council at the moment seems to be difficult because uh, that uh, it seems to be difficult at the moment because council is for architects and students are not architects yet. When they graduate, they'll become architects and get registered. Uh, apart from that, uh, apart from that, uh, the students uh, for the students to be on the council, the act needs to be amended again. That that point point also has to be added. Okay. But the thing is, it's it's a, it's it's a it's it's not a perpetual entity. A student is not a perpetual entity. It does not represent a collective thought process. So, uh, I, uh, principally, uh, dis uh, discussing won't is not a very feasible option. Mm -hmm. uh, is architect Sandeep Shikre here, please? Sandeep, are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm there. I'm there. Yeah. You like to shoot? You have hi, Sandeep. Hi, hi, Habib. Uh, firstly, let me sincerely give our compliments to Geeta, SH team, Srinivas and Habib for putting up a great show together. A much needed uh, kind of a dialogue which was missing for a quite a long time. And Habib, as you know, we are quite vocal, admiring you always. You lead from the front. Thank you. Thank so, you. So I think in, with respect to the initial dialogue which we had about the act, you know, and all of us, we agree that sky has not fallen down, but this act definitely requires an amendment. Why don't you prepare an appeal and all the architects in the country, we will sign it and you submit it to Mr. PM. And on one particular day of parliament, when it is a session on, make an appeal to all the architects and students to come to Delhi and let us show our collective strength. I think it's a time has come where we need to actually show our collective strength and bring that unity. And probably that's the most simplest and democratic. Let's, let's do that. Yeah. Let's do that. I'll be right in the front holding the flag. I know you can lead this very well. <laughs> but I think the time has come. You know, it's a simple way in a democratic setup to nicely and peacefully convey our message to the head of our country. And parliament is a place where this act needs to be amended. You know, Supreme Court will only interpret it and Supreme Court will right. only give their thing. So we need to focus our attention into a parliament. And probably I think that is doable. You have a nice social media tools with you. And I'm sure all the participants here will agree with me. Uh, if everybody right. wants an improvement, everybody needs to take active participation. It's, it's right. for all of us. And I think that was the one suggestion which I had. Rest all you have answered. The, the, only, only, apprehension, the, the only apprehension, Sandeep, that, we have, that I have is, uh, you know, assembling and demonstrating is construed as an opposition to the, uh, to the setup. 
uh, administrative or the political setup so i think uh, signing of letters is the first thing that we should do and then work towards uh, tabling it into parliament and if it is not then we can assemble and then we can show our uh, might yeah whichever is a peaceful and a legal way i i was just trying to talk on a very simple way yeah yeah so basically the concept your, your concept is basically to show unity and strength absolutely right so we Perfect. should do that i i request and i implore each and every architect in this country to respond to our social media outreach i implore all of you to you know sign up uh, sign this letter which sandeep is talking of i implore you to go and meet your mps and show your presence time has come now to stand united and to stay united and work towards it rather than you know getting uh, stuck in mundane issues like ye nahi karti councilor wo nahi karti aur ye karna chahiye just forget that let's be together let's be united and let us work in strengthening ourselves and our profession sounds uh, great sounds great abhi thank you very much for your valuable time thank you sandeep for being there thanks sandeep there's a question from a young architect nisarga bishwanath is nisarga there please nisarga bishwanath are you there uh she doesn't seem to be online right now okay okay moving on uh mr sanghani architect sanghani i think uh you had a question it probably has been answered really uh, although if you'd like to architect kushal gupta are you there okay i'll take a question from the chat here Yeah, uh, not from the chat only. Uh, yeah, go ahead if you have something. So this is this is a question from Tejas. Uh, rather difficult sounding. It says, "Why is CUA selling the email IDs of students registered for NATA to colleges it for was. a sum of twenty five thousand?" It happened last year, and it is wrong. Okay, so it's not happening. It happen. No, no, it's okay. not happening. So I hope that clarifies Tejas your question, um, and that's a straightforward answer from the council. um there is one more question which says that itpi has gone ahead and changed the recruitment rules of appointing town planners across the country so why can't coa do similar things for architects uh, this is a question from kushal gupta uh, i i i had asked kushal gupta to come forward and ask his yes. question he's there yes so this is the question if you would like to answer this question habib I don't know. We'll have to work out the nitty gritties and, and how we can do it. I really don't know. I'll have to look into it. Architect Moktik Trivedi, are you there? Moktik ji, he had a question saying uh, this is re respect to Gujarat, where uh, we were talking about empanelment of architect fees and registration fees for architects in uh, the local government uh, activities uh, letters from ca coa from the local iia haven't helped is there something that we can do we'll address that moktik we'll address that if it is not working with the letter or something let's have a representation done first at the local level if that doesn't work then we'll send someone from the coa level or i'll come personally and we'll see what can be done about it Carl Vadia, architect Carl Vadia, is Carl there? Uh, is someone looking? Uh, no, I okay. I don't think so. I, so his I'll question. Take, his question. Okay, I'll take two questions from the thing. One is from, uh, this is from Agartala. Uh, if I'm right, uh, it's Titan B Das. If I'm right in pronouncing the name, uh, it says yeah, that it is. Uh, उटेट Yeah, this I was not aware of. I just saw one of the you know Agar Tala question in the chat. I will look into it and I will talk to the local representative yes. from Agar from from that state and we'll work it out. I am not aware of this. There's okay. also a question on yes. uh, uh, why can't architect an architect form a private limited company? Is there a plan to include that as Thank well? We address that. We address that. Okay. Okay. 
Srini, anything else? Yeah, I think more or less uh, we are good. Uh, I think it was really very interesting. So I have a couple of thoughts I... so that I can... Uh, I have... So Mr. Mr. has a question. Can we go with Mridul? Okay. Okay. You were talking about uh, some verticals when you were talking about the social part. So what has been happening that you know we need to really penetrate into the domain, the realm of the lay public. A lot of good work is being done at architect's level. And all the publishing work happens only in esoteric magazines, magazines which are only for consumption of professionals and architects. I think what you need to really do is that start publications in the general magazines and the newspapers. I know that they face rapid obsolescence newspapers, but then the outreach is much more than what we have in our, within our own profession. I think that is something we, we really need to address. That was one. And the other was that now that so much noise is being made about uh, you know, this issue of ar architects retaining the title or, being able, or engineers being able to practice. There's a very, very strong lobby at engineering level and uh, other people also. So we have to really balance that now that we are really taking it up, that strong lobby is going to work against us because it has been happening in the past. It is going to be, how do we address that is something you really need to balance. Because while you, we will be pushing that only architects are able to practice or you know um, projects, they will also be pushing that because architects are in a minority, others, as it is happening, are allowed to practice also. Right. Thank you for the suggestion. Yeah. It's very valid the issues that you have raised. For answering the second part of it, there is a strong engineering lobby and they go to oppose like they did when the act was introduced in 72. The only thing is it is our skill and expertise to actually dissect the architectural services and define it so clearly that it does not overlap with engineering services. If you are able to define in the truest sense what architectural services, this problem should be taken care of. If we are inclusive rather than being exclusive, this problem will be solved. When we say that there are certain aspects of the building industry and the process of building where engineers are also important are needed and where architects are needed. If you're able to make this into a watertight compartment, I think this problem would be addressed, which we are trying to do at the moment. That is part number two. Part number one concerned uh, the social media outreach that you're talking of. That is, we are, we are approaching this in two aspects in two parts. First is reaching out to our own fraternity and the second is reaching out to people and the society at large. We are not only going to utilize the print media, the other magazines, but also the electronic media. The, you will find more and more architects coming on panel discussions on news channels and things like that. And, you know, uh, trying, to, trying to approach more uh, widely reached networks. We are working on that social initiative in the COA social thing. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> Uh, Shrini, anything else? You're, you're on mute, yeah. Yes, I have uh, two questions to Habib. <laughs> These are my questions. Um, I wanted to understand that, you know, how we are not able to encourage architectural journalism in this country to a great extent. We don't really write and publicize about architects of India's work as much it happens in Europe and US. And as a result, almost everybody who is a fairly successful architect abroad is an international architect but a very successful architect in India is still not an international architect. So uh, how does council look at it? Uh, what kind of an efforts you think should be done uh, in order to promote Indian architects uh, everywhere? This is a very valid point. We Indians don't document first our work. And then we don't speak about our work. And there's so much of good work happening in this country. If you see if you go as a jury member to these uh, awards, the IA awards, the Triple ID awards, and so many other awards that you go and you find that so much of good work is happening, but it's not coming in the public domain. Nor are these architects documenting their work effectively, nor are they talking about it, nor are they, you know, taking them to forums like conferences and seminars and other other places. So these people are actually uh, who are, uh, there's, a, there's a gold mine of work available here, but we don't do it. That is probably our nature or our genetic composition. I don't know, but. Uh, I hope that through the new institutes that we are talking of, through the new standard setting institutes of the TRCs, we will be able to address this issue substantially. Uh, and as an extension 
to that question i think it also leads to recognition of indian architects and having a credible award system in this country i mean right now most of the awards are given by industries uh, or you know invited i would say applications and then you select out of the invited ones uh, i think there is time now coa should think about a very i think if you if you have seen if you have seen recently if you nationally recognized recently we have just announced if you seen recent the social media we have just announced yes that I, the co is coming out with its excellence system excellence markups and the documentation awards and awards specifically for the practicing architects and professionals you recently announced it will be rolled out as soon as the framework is ready fantastic thank you so much because this is much needed you know effort on our part so that you know and we are making all ha huh? aga khan or something so we should right, be able right. to rise up to that level of recognition world over we are we are we are uh, striving to make it into an absolutely uh, excellent uh, uh, a platform for excellence where we'll have very 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 high quality of jury and high quality of assessment and total transparent and you know very uh, very interesting format of evaluation okay so i think with this habib we are nearing 130 now uh, i think uh, i would like to thank you on behalf of geeta i before i give the mic over to geeta thank you so much it was nice uh, catching up with you face to face a bit you know online my pleasure sure my pleasure thank you so soon. much and uh, uh, it, it was really exciting that as a president of council of architecture and as a you know fellow architect uh, you have come out and reached out to all of us and we all felt very encouraged and you allowed us to ask you all those difficult questions and i must tell you that we have hit a century Uh, more than a century now i would say about 112 questions is what we have asked you so uh, i hope this is the biggest <laughs> score that you could have got till now uh, i i would so over to you geeta before geeta takes over and i'll just say a couple of sentences which i feel one is that architects need to get out of their cocoons we need to talk about us we need to talk of what we are doing we need to go and reach out to people a section of society who doesn't know what architecture is all about which is the truth for all most of the part of the society so let's speak let's reach out to society let's tell us what we are what we do that's number one number two within our own fraternity it is my sincere and heartfelt request from the bottom of my heart that let us come together let us work in strengthening ourselves rather than pulling our pants down in public let us not wash our dirty linen in public let us come together let us strengthen each our own hand so that our future would be brighter future of the younger architects who are coming in would be architects who are coming in would be brighter and you know uh, much better to to as a, as a playing field if you want you want to call but let us stay united let us rise from the mundane issues of you know uh, so many uh, issues which are in the social media let's rise from that and uh, understand one thing that you are the council you are a part of the council you are an integral part of the council and we are there for you and you should be there for us thank you thanks uh, habib ji for those last i think i think i just want to say something here i think we should not only get our kachcha bag but we should actually get our three suit piece you know that should we should get it back and that's your effort uh, or, 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 yeah. or or i have this is jodhpuri or or a sherwani i started to say that i said a sari <laughs> 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 And sari also patni okay. and you know kanji or and all all those we want to get it back and we so, can do it collectively. Thank you. Thanks for being so open and uh, taking all these questions. I know it's uh, it's not easy when there is a lot of criticism being thrown also at you constantly as the council. I mean you can only uh, uh, put your best foot forward and. Let's all get together, like you said, and see if we can make that difference to our for our fraternity. And one more, I, Gita, a... I want to tell you. I want to tell you one thing very quickly. The whatever chat was happening, and a lot of questions were asked. There some might have got unanswered. So if you can collect them and send it to me, I will make an effort to answer each and every. I was just coming to that. One is we. What we would like to do is also probably transcribe this conversation that we had a little bit into a, a, a word file of sorts and put right. it on a blog. And right. all the questions. that have not been answered as well we'll document that and send them to you uh, and uh, this video as well if you're okay with it then we make it release it uh, 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 on social media 
along with the, the link to the blog where the entire chat, uh, chat has been transcribed. So I think you should. Yeah, I think you should. There might be many who have probably not been able to attend due to some reason or there the other. There were about yeah, we 100 be. registrations we had and I think about 600 to a little more than that would have logged on at different points in time today. So the other 600 would certainly would like to see what you have uh, had to say and I'm sure a lot many more as well. So and it's a, small, it's a small gesture to reach out to all those 1 lakh plus articles. Yes, so that maybe once we send you the link, uh, you could send it out to uh, everybody else as well if uh, right. through, through the council's handle if required. Right, right. Uh, yes, that's it. I'd, I'd like to thank Srini for uh, moderating this so efficiently and everybody who is here to ask your questions and uh, uh, I, hope, I hope we've managed to make this as open a session as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks thank and you. God bless. Be safe. Yes. Right. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay home. Yes. All of you. Bye bye, thanks. Bye bye.